church to the destitute, the bankrupt, the corrupt, and the disgusting. God's going to transform them into beautiful people, and the kingdom of heaven is going to come alive in your church. Okay, mama. But I forgot. I'd be driving down the street, and look at the disgusting. Look at, you, can't you look at that lady? God, dog, man. Have you ever seen a whale riding a motorcycle saying ugly things like that that God had to take out of my heart? I had to repent of my sin of judging people before God could use me that way. And as I was sitting in the bleachers, she came up and sat next to me like about from here to that microphone there. And she started smoking. And all of a sudden, something strange happened. The Holy Ghost spoke to me. How many of you have ever had the Holy Ghost speak to you? How many of you have the Spirit of God speak to you? How many of you have had the Spirit of God speak to you in the store and he said to you, raise your hands up and shout? And you said, raise your own hands up. You tell me to raise my hands up in aisle 17 and shout, what's wrong with you, man? I'm a respectable Mexican, man. I don't shout, Gloria a Dios. Raise your hands up and shout. If you want me to bless you, shout. Man, come on, Lord, don't do that here. Raise your hands up and shout right here. But Lord, look at that nice family coming up. Ray, I raise my hands up. Hallelujah! They turned around and looked at me. They were like, you a Christian? I go, yes, I am. Well, we're looking for a church. You know a good church around here. You're a good church. Woo, glory to God. Hold on. Hallelujah. I'm going to shout again. You never know what the Holy Ghost is up to. You never know what God is going to do when you listen to him and you minister to the poor in spirit. I sat there and the Holy Ghost said to me, Isaac. I said, man, don't yell so loud. People will hear it out of my ears right now, man. They're going to they're gonna hear that little microphone in my ears. Isaac. Isaac. I said, yes, Lord. And he said, put your Bible down. So I put my electronic Bible down. I carry, you know, I don't want to carry this one around. And I sat there, he said, uh, turn around and say hello to that lady. Said, wow! She got 12 earrings on her right ear. <laughs> turn around and say hello. To, wait, wait, man, she got Satan on her calf. She got a little devil with a pitchfork on her leg. That's satanic, man. That's demonic. Or demonic, whatever. It's demonic. Say hello to her. She's my child. She's your, your child. What am I then? You're my child too. Well, who do you love more? I love you both the same. That's cool. <laughs> say hello to her. You say hello to her. You made her. She's your child. You talk to her. She got here. You're my mouth. Well, thanks a lot. Man, how many of you felt guilty when you don't do what the Holy Ghost say to you? How many of you feel guilty when the Lord says, answer the phone, and you don't? And you say, oh, uh, man, those kids, man, I, I'm turning on my answering machine at 7 p.m. <laughs> How many of you feel guilty, huh? You know what I'm talking about. Oh, but I've been working real hard for Jesus. Father God, we're just not going to turn the phone on tonight. <laughs> and guess what? Somebody's calling you because you just want a million dollars, and you blew it. And so, okay, I said, okay, Lord. So I turned to her. I remember my mom said, lovely and lovely. I said, how are you doing, man? She said, pretty good. Really nice. And I said, uh, do you have a son out there? And she goes, oh, no, my nephew. My nephew's out there, Filippo. He said, one of the Samoan kids. Oh, okay. I well, my name is Isaac, and that's my son right over there, the quarterback. She goes, oh, David? I went, yeah, how do you know David? Everybody knows David. I mean, it was just like, like the Lord was just going, mm. 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 I said, oh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, by the way, what's your name? She goes, oh, they call me lovely. <laughs> the 
call me lovely. I, have, you, have you ever heard of a word, we, the, the Pentecostals event, it's called conviction. Or is that everybody's word? Or is just we get it more than everybody? <laughs> conviction. I was convicted. We started talking. She's a plain person in need of Christ. And I was in need of Christ another way. Because I thought that since I had Christ and I was in the kingdom, that it was all over. That I had no growing to do. That I had no developing to do. That God was done with me. But I want you to know something. That until we get to heaven, God is not done with you yet. God is not done with me. No matter what kind of ministry you have, we all have a need to grow in Christ. I kept talking to Lovely and invited Lovely to church. Lovely came. On Sunday, the church door opened and Lovely walked in. She had black boots. She had black nylons. She had short Levi's. Her hair was spiked. She had dark sunglasses on, and she sat down at the back and lovely gave her heart to God. Amen. Let me tell you, when Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, the preposterous truth of grace, the preposterous truth of God's mercy and love, the radical extreme truth of the good news of God's love is that when they're at their worst, God's at his best. The radical truth of Jesus Christ is that the kingdom of heaven is for the ones that we don't think deserve it. For those of us that didn't grow up in the gospel and for those of us that gave our heart to Jesus, we often forget where we were when the kingdom of God came to us. And I'm here to remind you that the other poor in spirit are us, those that work with youth, those that are tired, those that have come this weekend exhausted, those of us that are being picked up by the praise and worship of this wonderful worship team and of the choir that rose our spirit to the throne of God, that we come here this weekend to be ministered to by the Lord. You've come here to be restored. You've come here to be refreshed. You've come here to be renewed. You've come here to be salt, to retain your flavor. You've come here to be light, to keep it on. So that when you go back out to wherever you came from, you'll remember one thing. There are those that are poor in spirit because they're bankrupt, corrupt, and disgusting and destitute spiritually, and they don't have what it takes. But God has called the youth workers of the world to stand up in the name of Jesus and bring the kingdom of heaven to the ones that don't deserve it, to the youth of all the cities of America. God has not called you to quit. God has not called you to give up. God has not called you to be discouraged. You may be disappointed, but you should not be discouraged because the Lord Jesus Christ is with you wherever you go. Wherever you go, God has promised to be your refuge and to be your strength, to be your mighty stronghold, to be a rock for you in the middle of the city, to be strength for you in the middle of the problems of the youth that you face. Oh, they might be beat up and messed up. They might be drugged down and knocked down. But God has called you and me to reach out a loving, caring hand and pick them up and give them hope in the name of Jesus Christ. That's what God has called us to do. I want to remind you of that. In the beginning, God made youth workers. And he saw that it was good. 